Hi, just a quick video because so many people have asked for an update on the uh, USB power supply or the power supply projects in general. You know, I've um, started two of them and well, as you might know, I haven't uh, been doing any work on them for quite uh, some time, but I am now back into it. So this is just an update on the, the uh, USB uh, the battery powered USB supply that I was working on and you've uh, seen this uh, prototype in a couple of videos and uh, I've um, got some firmware up and running on it now so micro supply version 1.0 and uh, you know it's displaying I can set and display um, the constant uh, voltage and the constant current modes so uh, just a little bit of the menu uh, interface here I haven't got the full menu done yet but basically uh, voltage at the top this is currently displaying uh, output volts here and output uh, current I haven't zeroed the thing or anything like that yet so and this little selection device allows you to select if you press this it allows you to uh, toggle between volts and amps there and you'll notice if you actually uh, you'll notice that there's a little s there well when I let's say we want to set our volts this is our up down button here I can just go up like that so now it's actually displaying when you press those buttons it briefly displays the set that's what the S is for briefly displays the set voltage and the set current so I can set that 3.25 and 3.34 and eh, haven't uh, tweaked the thing as yet and you can do and if you want to set the current limit just go down here and you can set your current limit like that I haven't got the key velocity stuff all set in there but it does work just a treat so that is a little bit on the user interface with this uh, two line by eight character LCD it's um, adequate yeah it's it's not the, it's not the best for displaying a whole uh, bag of information but it is certainly usable now uh, with this so you know I've done some tests on it and I'm reasonably happy with it but you know me, I'm going to change it because I originally wanted to put it into this uh, poly case here. It was going to sit here. I was going to have punched holes and it was going to run from, uh, you know, a just single cell mobile phone battery. But I decided, well, if you're going to make the thing battery powered, it may as well have a lot of capacity in it. So I decided that the mobile phone battery just wasn't, you know, really the greatest capacity. These are only like you know, 12, 1400 milliamp uh, hours at uh, tops is really all I could fit into this uh, case here at, at uh, 3.7 volts, of course, single cell. And it was going to sit under the board and I was going to have a clear perspex uh, window on the top so you could see the uh, LCD and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I decided really, it, if you're going to do it, do it properly and get a decent battery. So I um, discovered this thing on uh, Hobby King uh, and the, this is a 5,000 milliamp hour 20C um, single cell lithium polymer battery and it's a bit of a beast. It's designed for 20C uh, discharge so um, you know it's a very huge high discharge capacity battery designed for uh, remote control um, you know cars and other uh, toys and things like that you can even get like a 40c discharge version I mean we don't need the discharge capacity of you know 20c because um, even this uh, cheap 20c version at uh, a rated 5 um, amp hours that's a hundred amps discharge um, this thing is capable of it, they're absolutely incredible lithium polymer cells let alone the 40c version double that absolutely incredible so anyway I thought uh, at the end of this video um, after I've done a little bit of a rant here I, on the update um, of the power supply I will uh, test the capacity of this battery at uh, lower C version so stick around for that at the end but yeah these are absolutely cheap this, uh, this one is the highest capacity you can get it's 10 millimeters uh, thick by um, oh, 120 or something like that by 40 and uh, it just so happens that 40 is the exact width of the LCD like that so I thought you know I can what I'll probably do is repackage this thing so that the um, uh, board you know base 
the design around this battery so that the board is long and thin like that. It's the same width, so the LCD sits on there like that. There'll be USB uh, charge sockets or other, maybe a higher capacity uh, charge socket as well on the input. And then uh, we'd have the screen in there, then we'd have the circuitry, and we'd have a couple of um, output binding posts on the other side there. And it'd be, you know, it doesn't have to be all that thick. You know, it's, it's only going to be, if you take the board plus that, we can even make it thinner than that. You know, it's not that thick at all. It's not that wide. Uh, this is reasonably uh, heavy, but, ah, uh, well, what the heck, you, you know, that's the price you pay for the huge capacity of this thing. But I figure if you're going to have a battery power power supply, you may as well have um, a decent uh, capacity in the thing. So I thought I'd base it around this. And yeah, have a long cylindrical package and that'll mean a custom case for this thing as well. I can get that laser cut out of clear acrylic or something like that, like just the exact width so you can um, see the LCD through it. And I'll have a similar sort of interface with the buttons on the side down here like that, all, all along the side here. And um, that should be really quite nice. I'm gonna stick with the same um, LCD. I rather like this, it's quite neat. It's working quite well. I've got my interface uh, working with it. So pretty darn happy with that. So I think that is the uh, avenue I'll go with this thing because I was going to uh, make a few changes to the board anyway, re-spin uh, re it. So I might as well uh, re-spin it for a higher capacity battery and a different uh, form factor. And um, really a, a few of the components on here quite wimpy. This one, because I was basing it on the lower capacity battery, I really didn't want to go that high in uh, current or output uh, power. So I think uh, with this new one, I might uh, step it up a notch um, and have a uh, higher output uh, voltage regulator and a higher output uh, switch mode or a higher power uh, capable uh, switch mode converter, perhaps, um, just for some extra output capacity. So there you go. That's the update. I am working on it and uh, it does actually um, do the business and work here. So um, uh, for example, like a current, I can, let's set the current. Let's go down here. Let's set it. Yeah, and I need more room on the board to put proper silkscreen labels and stuff. This board was pretty packed. By the time I got everything on there, I mean, there really wasn't much uh, room left for uh, silkscreens. I put the little name on there at an angle, squeezed it in. I squeezed in my platypus underneath there, and oh, it was, you know, um, it was really quite a squeeze. So hopefully uh, this will give me some more... Uh, um, uh, room to uh, lay out the components, have a bit more uh, silkscreen designate. Anyway, I've got my um, current limit set to say 288, that'll do, 288 milliamps, 3.3 volts output. I've got a 10 ohm, high power 10 ohm resistor here. We'll whack it across and uh, we should get our current limit at around, there you go, 288 milliamps. So it's, uh, it's working uh, quite nicely and uh, I've measured a bit of its performance and I'm quite happy with it, but yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit wimpy. So I thought I'd step it up a bit. And the good thing about these Turnergy batteries, I took the opportunity just to get a couple of different uh, samples of the thing. Just be careful of these tabs, by the way. You don't want to short them out. That's why they come with uh, these, uh, the, these protective uh, tape over the ends of them. But anyway, even this whopping 5,000 milliamp hour one, this was only like eight bucks or something. I mean, you know, unbelievably cheap. And they have the same size, but in a 3300 milliamp hour, that's uh, cheaper again, but it is uh, thinner and lighter weight compared to the 5000 milliamp hour one. But I'll, um, I'll design the thing around the 5000 milliamp hour one, I think. Um, you know, just because, well, you can. It's the same size and shape. Depends on what uh, price and weight you want, but there's not a huge price difference. Um, and they've got smaller ones like this 2200 milliamp hour. Once again, it's uh, 20C, and I think you can get higher capacity versions as well. And it's smaller, and then they step down to this nice little uh, 1000 milliamp hour 20C one, so that might come in handy for some other projects. So these are really quite neat and by me you know less than 10 bucks unbelievable you know for the capacity you can get in this thing and 20c discharge man anyway i thought i'd do some measurements on that so i'm going to uh, hook up my uh, bk precision electronic uh, load here and uh, 
we'll see, and up to my PC, and uh, we'll see if we can get a battery discharge curve on this thing. One, as I said, I don't want to do uh, 20C, but let's uh, do, you know, a benchmark at uh, 1C or something and see what we get. And by the way, um, I think I mentioned that I did actually capture the layout of this uh, board, the full layout. So I might, uh, even though I'm going to change it, I might uh, still go through and um, uh, add some commentary on top of that uh, layout and uh, upload, that, upload that just like I did with my previous uh, power supply one. Because they're I think they're really interesting videos just adding commentary to uh, real-time or sped up uh, real-time PCB layout because, you know, it took me like, you know, <laughs> and, you know, five hours or a day or something to uh, lay out this board properly. So um, I'll speed that up and uh, might add some commentary. Now I've got my BK Precision 8500 electronic load hooked up to the PC here via the USB uh, adapter which I got with it. You can get uh, an RS-232 or a USB. I've got both using the USB. Um, and uh, I've hooked it up to the PC software here. And as it so happens, the uh, PC software that comes with this BK Precision one um, it does actually have a battery discharge application. So it allows us to um, uh, specifically set up the battery and uh, discharge it and get the discharge curve and save it and it calculates the milliamp hour capacity of the battery and so forth. So I haven't tried it yet. Um, <laughs> let's see if it works. I hope it works. Now, as I've mentioned before, one of the really annoying things about this BK Precision 8500 load is that it doesn't have standard um, it, these binded posts, great. Look at them, big, fat, chunky. Ah, oh, love the things. Great looking knob on them. But they don't have support for standard banana jacks like that, even if you take them off. They're, uh, hopeless. God. So, you know, I've got like a nice, you know, a uh, high amperage, um, you know, banana plug to alligator clip cable I can use just for this thing. But, ah, oh, man, now I've got to like bodge it in there with it, you know, squeezing in the binding post. Hopeless. Now, of course, you can use your uh, constant voltage, constant current uh, bench power supply to charge up a uh, lithium polymer cell, but you've got to watch it. It's not, you know, you've got to know what you're doing. You've got to set it precisely to 4.2 volts. You've got to watch the um, uh, time limit on the thing and, you know, got to be very careful if you're doing that. But what I got from Hobby King as well for like 22 or 25 bucks or something is a um, six cell uh, Turnergy again, it's the same uh, brand, uh, lithium polymer, it does everything. It does lithium polymer, nickel metal, various uh, lithium uh, types, nickel metal hydride, NICAD, lead acid, um, up to six cells. Of course, this is only a single cell. It's really nice. I mean, uh, for, you know, for like under 30 bucks, it's absolutely incredible. So that's what I charged up this uh, battery with. It's got uh, the uh, big positive and negative uh, banana. Uh, terminals out there. I actually uh, use this to um, charge up my uh, batteries from my quadcopter. They're also uh, Turnergy um, lithium polymer high discharge uh, batteries as well. They're uh, 35, 35 to 45C discharge for my uh, quadcopter slash canyon copter. So yeah, really quite neat. Um, so I have fully charged this battery um, according to this thing. So let's give it a go. And of course, fully charged, you would expect it uh, to read 4.20 volts, and that's exactly what we get. Um, as I've mentioned before, this BK Precision electronic load is really incredibly um, accurate, as good or better than uh, your typical fluke, uh, high-end fluke multimeter. So, you know, really precision bit of kit. And uh, as you can see, it's got the link uh, remote function um, on there, so it is hooked up to the software and ready to go. And here's the uh, PV8500 uh, PC software that comes with it, and it looks uh, rather neat. It is actually hooked up, so it's actually monitoring uh, this thing at the moment. You can see that uh, it's uh, 4.2 volts here. I don't like these dicky readouts. They're actually quite hard to read. They've made them look like seven segment. Um, it looks worse in uh, real life than on the camera here, but those background ones just really bleed into the, the digits don't stand out much at all. It's really quite annoying. Um, so they tried to go all wanky there, and they've just failed. Anyway, you can set it up to various, uh, like constant voltage mode, uh, constant current mode, constant resistance mode, and constant power mode. And for those who want to whinge that I'm not actually screen capturing this thing, I'm just shooting uh, the LCD with my camcorder, don't bother. Give me a break. 
Now this Turnergy battery at a nominal uh, 5,000 milliamp hours at 3.7 volts, you mu multiply those two figures and it's got a nominal watt hour capacity, which is sometimes more important than the milliamp hour capacity. In fact, in most cases it probably is. It's 18.5 watt hours nominal capacity. That means this thing should be able to, um, you know, roughly deliver one watt uh, continuous power for 18 and a half hours and ideally I'd probably like to, uh, that's how I've tested batteries, uh, battery capacity in the past, tested and specified battery capacities in uh, watt hours. So I can probably do that here with the constant wattage mode, I could probably get the graph and everything but I really want to, um, it doesn't look like you can, you might be able to save the data and I don't know, I'm going to use the battery uh, capacity wizard and check it out. It's got a specific battery discharge wizard, zoom in on this sucker, and uh, it, but unfortunately, uh, like it looks quite neat, but unfortunately it o looks like it only has constant uh, current capability. It doesn't allow you, even though supply, uh, this uh, load can do it, it, it doesn't allow you to do constant resistance or constant uh, wattage, constant power, which is really quite annoying, but anyway, it looks like we'll have to get our uh, discharge um, capacity uh, graph in um, a continuous current because the reason you want to use continuous power is because the DC to DC converter is essentially a continuous power and most um, uh, you know products that are you know they're going to operate on, on an average continuous power and the DC to DC converter is going to have an efficiency loss there but it's essentially constant power so that's why it's more useful to uh, um, analyze and specify your batteries in terms of watt hours for a project like this. But anyway, we don't have that um, luxury here. So, um, uh, you know, milliamp hours will do. So this is, has a nominal 5,000 milliamp hour at, uh, I don't know what that's rated at. I can't get the data sheet if it's actually rated for the full 20C or it's rated for 1C discharge or whatever it is, I don't know. So we will just have to, uh, um, just discharge it at 1C, see if it gets around about that figure and of course once it's finished doing it, it will actually calculate the capacity or it should calculate the capacity in milliamp hours. Haven't actually tried it yet. Now when you're testing these batteries you want them uh, not to just discharge them all the way, you can damage the thing so you don't want to leave the thing running overnight and come back and found oh it didn't cut out and uh, you know you've ruined your battery. So you want this um, setting, they've got a safety vault set in here and uh, you can set that um, to a minimum voltage and I presume when it gets down to that minimum voltage it will just stop uh, the d discharge and uh, or you can do it based on time or you can do it based on capacity as well. So if you know this thing has a certain capacity then you know eh, you do it. I the, safe, the best way to do it is with the safety voltage. Now I don't have the data sheet for this thing but the next best thing we do have a Panasonic um, data sheet for a, you know, a, sing a similar lithium polymer cell, not as high a capacity, it's only rated for you know, 2900 milliamp hours, but it's going to be very similar and the, um, I've, gone, I've done videos on these uh, you know, lithium polymer uh, charging tutorials and stuff like that, various uh, battery testing, battery, battery capacity testing tutorials before, um, so check those out if you want to. But it's going to have a similar, this, this uh, Turnergy one should have a very similar discharge characteristic to this because it's also a lithium polymer standard uh, 4.2 uh, charging voltage and the safety cutout voltage I reckon should be about 3 volts because really that's where it, you know, it just drops off like that, just drops off like a brick wall and you've used up, you know, 95 to 99% of your usable capacity of your battery so you really don't want the thing to run under three volts. If you wanted to squeeze an extra percent out, maybe you could go under that, but you know, no, nah, three volts. So we'll set our uh, safety voltage down here to three volts. And uh, yeah, I assume that will do that. Our sampling time, oh, I don't know, it goes for an hour. We'll set it, let's disable that. So it's gonna sample once per second. And uh, now all we need to do is set up the discharge current and it looks like it's got a discharge current list over here and um, this is rather interesting it looks like you can set up like multiple stages um, but we really don't need that so can I just delete I wonder if I can just delete one of those 
import export no sell so we want to discharge this thing at 1c just to get a uh, baseline of how this thing works so um, you know it's got a very low ESR this thing it's capable of 20c discharge so it'll easily handle uh, 5 amp discharge no problem at all and really 5 amps is uh, well above uh, well quite significantly above any uh, discharge current that's going to be used in say my little uh, portable USB power supply but it'll give us a good baseline so it should do that I believe it should uh, as soon as I press go start down here it should start discharging at 5 amps immediately for two hours but we know it's only going to be all over in one and it should our safety voltage cut out at three volts I'm assuming the help doesn't tell me that but um, you know <laughs> based on my experience that's what this kind of software should do and um, I've mentioned before in uh, previous um, in my electronic load uh, tutorial I, I project video I think that you can do this uh, yourself you don't need a fancy 300 watt programmable DC electronic uh, load you can design you can design and build your own load a lot of people very popular project actually a lot of people on the EEV blog forum are designing and building really quite nice do-it-yourself electronic loads and a lot of them are uh, either microcontroller programmable or and or PC programmable supplies so you can do this yourself um, you can do it with a DAC card and a you know and a FET and, and you know not much else and an op amp not much else really so um, you don't necessarily need a high-end electronic load like this one to get these sort of discharge characteristic uh, curves you can uh, certainly do it yourself and I've uh, done it myself before using you know National Instruments DAT card or something like that and a little black box which you know discharges batteries or I've, you know done it in the manual method I've designed my own little battery discharge logger over the years and uh, there's many different ways to do it but anyway I'm going to give this a go so here we go I'm going to press uh, start and hopefully this thing will jump up to 5 amps and it will start recording and get our discharge curves so here we go uh, time yeah safety voltage 3 volts here we go start and I've started but well 4 volts no what's going on oh I think I know what I've done wrong a delay this is a delay <laughs> it's actually a delay before it starts doing that so you want to start that with delay zero like that okay so it was it was waiting two hours so let's actually set that to you know seconds so delay zero seconds it doesn't allow us it allows us 10 milliseconds minimum so right I think now it should um, after one second delay jump to five amps I think that's what it's saying there okay there we go and yep we are five amps and spot on five amps and we're dropping 4.07 4.2 you remember it was at it's instantly dropped down to 4.07 due to the internal ESR and uh, it, you'll find that will continue to drop of course until we get down to three volts which should be our safety cutoff voltage here and uh, so I could hopefully safely go away but it's only an hour I'll still be here um, so we'll come back when that is done and we should see you can start seeing it's slowly starting to step down there a little tiny step so we should see our discharge curve look very close to that we'll get a sharp uh, uh, drop at the start and then you know a reasonably linear slope and then it'll start to curve off curve off and then boom should drop off the end there um uh, yeah probably this one might be a little bit flatter than that at the end point I don't know we'll find out that's the idea of this test but anyway there's our capacity going up our capacity in amp hours I'm assuming it is because it's voltage and current so it'd be um, amp hour capacity so it is working very nicely see you in an hour and I lied it's not an hour yet uh, we're at about 1.87 I couldn't help myself had to press record again uh, 1.87 uh, uh, amp hours at the moment uh, 
and uh, we're, you know, it, we're still at uh, 3.75 volts here, and it looks like a linear drop, but it's uh, not going to be by the time we get to the end of it. And uh, just in case you're wondering, uh, no, this thing does not get uh, warm at all because the internal ESR is so low. In internal ESR of a uh, battery is what actually uh, causes them to heat up, of course. And uh, this one's designed for 20 times this discharge current. So you won't even see this thing ra you know, uh, rise in temperature by a degree. And what do you know? It's uh, almost an hour there. Depletion time, it seems to have stopped. And uh, it's, yeah, we were practically spot on the uh, five amp hours there. So it is essentially exactly as rated right there. And it's uh, jumped back up, of course. It's jumped back up to 3.16 volts because there's no longer any load. But that was practically spot on an hour. Go figure. Jeez, they don't lie on their label, do they? Now, whether or not that uh, capacity is the same at uh, 20C, I don't know. You'd expect it to be a bit less, but there you go. And we have that characteristic discharge curve with that fall off, rapid fall off. And yeah, if we went down to like 2.6, it just would have fall, it'll just fall off like a brick wall right there. So at three volt cutoff, we're using, uh, you know, 95% uh, plus capacity of the battery, 98, maybe even 99% capacity of the battery. So the uh, low, volt low voltage uh, battery detection um, in this uh, micro uh, supply should be set to around three volts. Um, and it can like automatically switch off the output once it reaches that and stuff like that. There's no buzzer in it to sort of alert you, but the LCD can certainly pop up low bat, low bat. And we can view report down here, but before I do that, I think I'll uh, hit that save curve to file, and bingo, it allows you to uh, save that to a bitmap, or nice, JPEG or PNG, let's choose PNG, don't mind PNG, so we can save that, we've got our graph, and uh, presumably we can save our data as well, because uh, load plot from file, save plot to file, we can dot plt files oh, well yeah whatever okay and uh, presumably we can export well maybe if we uh, go into view report we can export excel or txt excellent well we should be able to name txt i don't see any data in there though so maybe it's uh query date no not sure what's going on there Hmm. So that's not a bad little app. It certainly did cut out of the safety voltage of uh, three volts, which occurred very rapidly there. And if we left it running after that, if you were doing this test uh, manual, for example, and even if you're sitting there watching it, but you weren't paying attention because you're too busy uh, soldering something for uh, a couple of minutes, well, you know, your battery drops down and uh, you can um, over discharge your battery and uh, it won't be a happy little camper that's for sure so having a safety cutoff like this works really well now the other thing they've got is um the x-axis here is actually in capacity um usually i prefer that in time but we should be able to export the uh, data and do that in uh, time i mean sometimes you want it in capacity but others you want time but our depletion time was 59 minutes and 11 seconds and 4.2 volt start voltage and it's uh, almost smack on five amp hours capacity with a constant current uh, load that will change like with a uh, uh, voltage like in terms of uh, watt hours with uh, a constant wattage load but there you go that gives you a good indication that this cell is uh, certainly not uh, well it's certainly not ripping you off anyway it does meet its claimed spec so there you go that's just a little uh, update on the usb power supply and i will endeavor to uh, spend some more time on it so hopefully more videos coming soon catch you next time